NASA has embarked on a 12-year quest to study a record-setting eight asteroids in a single mission. The Lucy spacecraft launched from Cape Canaveral early Saturday morning. Scientists believe the mission will shed light on some of the solar system's least understood objects. BBC News correspondent Duncan Kennedy has more. Three, two, one, zero. The start of a four billion mile journey. Lift off. Atlas V takes flight. The Atlas V rocket is carrying a craft called Lucy that aims to go into orbit around Jupiter and study a group of asteroids called Trojans, some of which are the size of a city. So what are the Trojan asteroids? They're asteroids that orbit with Jupiter around the sun that ultimately hold the clues to the formation of our solar system. Lucy's giant solar panels would only generate enough electricity to power a few light bulbs on Earth. But around Jupiter, it's enough to reach the Trojan asteroids and ask questions like, what are they made of and where do they come from? By going to visit a large number, eight asteroids, in total over the mission lifetime, uh, we'll really better understand all about the asteroids. So if you only see one, you, maybe you got a sort of a bit of a funny one, right? But by seeing eight, you get to really understand what's going on in this population. Scientists want Lucy to test their theory that the early solar system was juggled around by gravity, with some objects being thrown in and others out, just like billiard balls. But they'll need patience. Lucy's expected to be operating around asteroids for the next 12 years. Duncan Kennedy, BBC News. Joining us now from Kennedy Space Center is CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. Bill, always a pleasure. Let's start off with the basics. Tell us, what are the seven Trojan asteroids and what's the significance of the eighth asteroid that Lucy is hunting? Well, as we just heard, the Trojans orbit the sun out in the same orbit as Jupiter. Now, Lucy's not going to Jupiter. It's not going to orbit Jupiter, uh, but it's going to loop into and out of two swarms of these astronauts, ast asteroids, I should say. One swarm is about 60 degrees in front of Jupiter. The other is about 60 degrees behind it. And what makes them unique is these orbits are very, very stable. The objects in them have been there since the very beginning of the solar system, and they think these asteroids really represent pristine remnants of the raw materials that went into making the planets. Uh, so by studying them, they hope to gain some insights into the evolution of the outer planets, what they were made of at the time, and how things have changed uh, in the four and a half billion years since the solar system started forming. Hey, our viewers are watching that intricate orbital path that it's taking. Um, so tell us, how exactly will the spacecraft be able to gather additional information uh, about these asteroids? Well, you know, you mentioned the path they're taking. It really is unique. It's going to require three gravity assist flybys of Earth. There's two coming up in 2022 and 2024. You don't get to the first asteroid encounter until 2025. Uh, when Lucy will go by an asteroid in the main belt uh, between Jupiter and Mars. And then it goes on out to the first swarm of Trojans where it'll pass by five of those asteroids. Then it loops back into the solar system. It goes by Earth a third time in 2030 and finally gets to the eighth uh, asteroid. Actually, it's the seventh and eighth out in the other Trojan swarm uh, when it'll fly by asteroids named uh, Patroclus and Menetius that actually orbit each other. They're a binary pair, and that's of special interest to the astronomers. They're uncommon in the mm -hmm. inner solar system. They are more common in the extreme outer solar system, so perhaps they've migrated in. And it tells you something about the movement of these bodies over time. That's so interesting. You're right. Intricate doesn't even begin to encapsulate no. <laughs> how difficult that, that orbital path is. Um, I think we now have a better understanding of why this mission is going to take 12 years to complete. Can you tell us anything more uh, about the considerations that went into planning out the, that path and, um, and, and that long term? I mean, a dozen years, uh, it, it's going to con is it going to continue to be returning results all of that time? Yeah, you know, it's really fascinating. We all forget how far away Jupiter's orbit is, but it's about five times further from the sun uh, than Earth is. And so at the extreme of its trajectory, uh, Lucy will be flying about 530 million miles uh, from the sun, and it just takes a long time to get there. And it couldn't do it at all hmm. without these Earth flybys. You know, they've got to set the trajectory up. And remember, 
The Earth is going around the sun. All of these asteroids are following their own orbits. They had to design a trajectory, taking all of those motions into account uh, to get this spacecraft to, to be able to fly past all eight of these asteroids along the way and to get these three Earth flybys. I mean, you know, I cover this stuff and it, it's almost like black magic how they figure out how to guide these spacecraft in these really intricate uh, maneuvers. Uh, definitely feels like science fiction, but here we are living it. So oh. um, I'm, I'm wondering, Bill, uh, as we're seeing space and the exploration of space really tr change um, in recent years, should we expect that this unmanned mission is more along the lines of what we will continue to see from NASA in the coming years? Well, you know, it's interesting. What's going on right now in the space industry is, is a kind of a, a marriage between government operations and commercial operations. We've got commercial entities now are going to be flying spacecraft to the moon uh, as part of the Artemis program. These are robots that are going to be looking for signs of water ice in these permanently shadowed craters on the moon. More and more countries are getting involved in sending probes out into the solar system. And I think as this all progresses, I think, I think it's the commercial aspect of this that's really interesting is companies, you know, begin designing spacecraft to take advantage of space and perhaps find markets out there, uh, either resources or knowledge that's worth money to somebody, uh, that, that goes beyond sheer government exploration. But in the near term, uh, in the United States anyway, it's NASA that's doing this, and we should let, you don't have to look far. Uh, in December, NASA's going to launch the, the uh, James Webb Space Telescope. You know, this is the successor to Hubble uh, that's going to supposedly see light from the very first stars and galaxies it formed after the Big Bang. NASA's building another spacecraft called the Europa Clipper that's going to go out to Jupiter and orbit some of its moons where they believe subsurface oceans exist that might be abodes of life or at least a habitable environment under the ice. And so I think it's a lot of fun. This is a, it's a great time to be watching all this, uh, being able to learn these things about the solar system that we never knew before uh, is truly fascinating. It, it is. Um, and you know, as, as you're talking about this explosion in the number of launches from private organizations, and we're seeing NASA take on more of the mm -hmm. outer reaches of space, or at least much further than space travel has gone before with these unmanned research vessels, do you think that, uh, that U U.S. commercial space or international commercial space will continue sort of supplementing where we saw the shuttle program going, where it's really just sort of within our neighborhood of space and that NASA is going to continue to push the boundaries? Or do you expect that private companies will also start to, um, to come into that, that exploration uh, of space in the way that, that we're seeing uh, and discussing NASA doing now? You know, governments have always been the, taking the lead in pure exploration because it costs so much money. Uh, there's no question about that. But you know, companies like SpaceX are building rockets that uh, they intend to fly to Mars on their own, you know, as commercial ventures. Now, whether those are research missions in the exploration sense or if they are things like carrying tourists um, or researchers at, at a profit, in other words, a company pays uh, SpaceX or some other company to, to launch their researchers into space, I mean, all of that's still going to be shaking out over the next several years. NASA's always going to have a role in, in the really big ticket uh, deep space exploration. You know, the Artemis moon program to uh, send astronauts back to the moon this decade on a sustainable basis. I mean, private industry is not up to that yet. Uh, but I think the day's coming when it will be. And I think companies like SpaceX that are building big rockets that can carry, you know, heavy equipment and lots of people out into space is really going to be a game changer. It's not quite here yet, but it's clearly coming. Yet being the operative word, of course. Bill Harwood, thanks. Absolutely.